This is the Polestar 2. It's the all-new electric car from the startup company Polestar. Today, I'm going to go ahead and show the exterior features, interior features, and share my driving impressions. So you may be wondering, what is Polestar? Uh, in years past, Polestar has been the high-performance subdivision of Volvo, in a way like AMG for Mercedes-Benz or M for BMW. Now, Polestar has spun off as its own brand, and they're dedicated to making all-electric vehicles. Now, the Polestar vehicles are actually produced in China. So this vehicle is built and assembled in China. Um, to my knowledge, this is one of the only vehicles available now in the United States that's assembled in China. And where it gets really confusing is that Volvo is still using the Polestar name in their own cars. So, for example, the Polestar engineered uh, plug-in hybrid models. So uh, it can definitely be a little bit confusing as to what the identity of this brand is, but basically, um, ownership by Volvo, but really by Geely, this uh, Chinese automaker, and then um, an emphasis on all electric cars. As with any electric car, I'm sure you're very interested, what about the battery, what about the powertrain, what's the setup, because they're all a little bit different. So this one has two of the identical electric motor, one on the front axle and one on the rear. Same unit, but they both produce 201 horsepower and 243 pound-feet of torque. They can give you all of that power combined um, at the same time, so in all-wheel drive, it'll produce 402 horsepower and 487 pound-feet of torque. As far as the battery, this is a 78 kilowatt hour unit. It's 400 volts. Um, now, this one only supports DC fast charging up to 150 kilowatts, which if you asked about that a couple of years ago, that would be very fast. But now that there's the Porsche Taycan with 350 kilowatt EV charging, this one's not the fastest. So um, what that means for you is recharging the battery on a public DC fast charging station at 150 kilowatts is going to take 40 minutes to reach 80% charge. With these Continental Summer tires on, this Polestar 2 is going to achieve an EPA estimated range of 233 miles. So as far as the proportions and the shape of it, it is a little bit weird. Towards the front, this is maybe more traditionally like a sedan, but it does get much taller, kind of like a hatchback, and then it does swoop down like a hatchback. But what I find to be uh, the most uh, different about the design of the Polestar 2 is that at the end it does kind of flatten out again. So they're kind of creating a unique new shape. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the rear end, but certainly the front end design is very handsome and uh, they're able to achieve better interior headroom uh, by, by taking this hatchback design and uh, keeping this form factor. I think the front end design of the Polestar um, is very minimalistic, very clean. Uh, I, I like the grille design, these uh, kind of squares that they've going on here. And it does take some cues from Volvo. I think where you can see that the most is the headlights. Um, while they're not exactly the same shape as Volvo models, they do have kind of the split daytime running line that comes, daytime running light that comes across the middle like this. Um, so in a way it is similar to Volvo, but these are obviously unique headlights. I think the rear end design, while also minimalistic like the front, is not quite as clean. Um, this whole thing where the back part of the tailgate is flat really doesn't work for me. And this line that comes all the way across the front doors, across the rear fender, I think just they take it a step too far and it comes out. It's just a really sharp corner here. I'm not, I really am not a fan of this. As far as the tail lights, they also take some design inspiration from Volvo. If you were to cut it off from here, you might uh, think that this uh, C-shaped light design might be off of Volvo S60, perhaps. Um, so again, taking some Volvo design cues, but um, its own unique look. Um, let's go ahead and take a look inside the trunk. The release is all the way down here on the bumper. There's nothing up here. So it is a power trunk. Um, unfortunately, I think that the trunk size is rather small. Um, not the best utilization of space because of this swooping design, and I really the cargo cover is totally flimsy, although it is nice that under here they do give you a little bit of extra room. Kind of a weird shape, but it's nice that you, they give you some extra. There is a front trunk, however, it's not terribly usable. Uh, under here, basically we only have spot for your charging equipment, so, and that's what's in here. This is your 240 volt charging cable. So in the interior, um, the driving position is pretty good and the seats I think are actually quite comfortable. Um, I've come to expect that Volvo will always deliver a very ergonomic seat and Polestar has delivered it here with this one. Uh, I think that the driving position is appropriate for a vehicle like this, kind of a, kind of a mix between a higher, a higher driving position because it is kind of, it's significantly taller than a regular hatchback or sedan, but it also gives you the right vantage point to have a sporty driving experience. 
So this is the infotainment system on the Polestar 2, and this is really one of the best features in the car. Um, this is the first uh, vehicle to use the new Android um, operating system for a car, so Polestar farmed out the work to Google, and this is easily one of the very best infotainment systems I've ever used. Very well laid out. I don't even mind that the climate control is controlled on the screen and there's no separate buttons. It's so good, I don't really care. So across the top, we've got different menus, straight to the stuff that you might find important, parking cameras, um, car, car settings, and then this is kind of the main screen here where they divide it up into four uh, spaces. And this is one of the best features of all. Because it's made by Google, the native, uh, native maps is Google Maps. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, no more just relying on Apple CarPlay and then porting it over to the, to the car so you can use Google Maps. It comes with Google Maps. That's really pretty fantastic. And because the infotainment system is done by Google, that means it also has the Google Assistant. In my opinion, the Google Assistant is the best voice assistant on the market, certainly better than any voice assistant in any car, and uh, I think it uh, works better than the uh, competition from Apple in terms of Siri. So really nice to see that here, and you can use the Google Assistant to control a lot of features of the car, and it's gonna understand what you say, what you're saying. Well, that's just fantastic to have that in a car. Polestar also says that they're gonna continue updating this system with over the hour updates, you can see up here it does have uh, 4G signal. So uh, it looks like Polestar also successful, like Tesla, in delivering a system that will be updated over the air. So this is your viewpoint in the Polestar. And to be honest, in terms of the materials around here, I am really unimpressed. Uh, Polestar does offer a leather interior for $4,000 extra. Um, this does not have it, so the middle of the steering wheel is plastic, doesn't feel very good. This is um, their uh, kind of textile cloth material on the top, plastic here, good door handle. This is the speaker grill. This is um, also kind of a mesh material, but this stuff here on the armrest, which is their um, eco-friendly alternative to a, a leather interior, it just feels like a, like a really basic cloth interior, a really basic cloth car. Um, you can see on the seats that it's the same story with the cloth. Um, the texture on it is fine, but I mean, in a car at this price point, this interior really does not feel premium. Um, also, uh, up on here, there's this just feels really, really uh, cheap. Um, plastic grab handles. Um, this uh, sun visor, not the best either. So I... I have also sat in a Polestar that does have the leather interior. It does upgrade it significantly. I can see why it costs $4,000. Trust me, it's more than just the seats that they're upgrading and I would really strongly recommend that you go for that. Something else that's really a neat touch in the interior is that there is a Polestar logo um, that is reflected onto the panoramic sunroof. Stepping into the back of the Polestar, um, it's a little bit tight here. I have the seat where I was using it. I'm six foot one. Knee room is not great, and neither is headroom because of the kind of the fastback design. Although you do get a really excellent view back here of the giant panoramic uh, roof. That's a really premium feature and one of, uh, one of the best points of the interior on this car. One ergonomic gripe that I do have about the back seat is that the armrest, like, it's really difficult to rest your arm on it. Uh, your arm doesn't really want to go in there. And then also to roll down the rear windows, you kind of have to reach back like this to actually get at the switch. So not the most thoughtful design here in the back seat. All right, let's do acceleration from a stop. Okay, that's pretty strong. Uh, definitely not as violent off the line as a Tesla, but and I felt that the acceleration was kind of building as I was uh, as I was going. So off the line, pretty, pretty strong off the line, and then it was giving me even more power and torque after that. So maybe that's uh, part of the stability control, but overall acceleration, very impressive. Um, I believe Polestar quotes this car at a 4.7 0 to 60 time. Um, this felt very quick, and actually car and driver uh, in instrumented testing saw this car do 0 to 60 in 4.1, and I believe uh, Based on the seat of the pants, that's that's totally believable. So, 
uh, Polestar has taken the same approach as Tesla to regen. So basically, you can control it in the infotainment system, and there's three settings. Um, they call it one pedal driving off, low, and standard. Um, basically, controlling how much regen is going to be applied when you lift off the accelerator pedal and before you touch the brakes. Uh, I think this system it can take a little bit longer to get used to for somebody who's never driven an electric car, but um, I, Polestar has done the math and they figure that this will be the most efficient. So unlike the Volkswagen Group electric products um, like the e-tron and the Taycan, there are no paddles to control the amount of regen, so like Tesla, that is something that you change in the infotainment system. Another thing that they've done with the regen is, um, it feels like to me, the faster you go, the stronger the effect of the regen when you let off the accelerator pedal. Um, so when, if you're trying to use it, to uh, use one pedal driving to come to a stop, it does, to me, it feels like it gets a little bit weaker once you get to lower speeds, and maybe you will have to use the, uh, the actual brake pedal. This vehicle is equipped with the optional performance package, which includes Olin's adjustable, manually adjustable dampers. And I would say that the ride quality is certainly firmer than most uh, luxury cars at this standpoint. It's, it's uh, pretty stiff, especially over potholes, less so over larger um, bumps and undulations in the road. But I find that over a pothole or cracks in the road, um, it can actually be quite jarring. Uh, definitely contributes to a very sporty feeling ride quality. And with the performance package, you also get these 20 inch rims and the gold brakes. Uh, I think these are very handsome and come with a very uh, sporty looking continental summer tire. All right, so coming into a curvier road here, the steering feels very electronic. Uh, it's not really connected to anything, but it is still, it still feels very precise. Um, and the car feels very level in cornering. Um, I think they've done a really good job with this uh, Olin suspension. And while it's not like a really serious performance car, uh, Polestar has certainly achieved uh, what will be to most people a very, uh, very sporty handling, uh, even though the, the steering does feel a little bit distant. Something else I just noticed is that I, I just drove past a school and I got a little notification in the gauge cluster that I was, that I was near a school and it said uh, speed limit 25. So cool to see that Polestar is bringing some of the safety technology that Volvo is known for. Overall, the comfort level when driving this car is pretty good despite the relatively firm ride. The seats, the seats are supportive and comfortable and the um, and the whole driving experience is very quiet. When I saw the tires that were on this car, I was expecting there to be um, a lot of tire noise uh, when when driving, but it seems to they seem to be pretty pretty good. Um, wind noise is also very good, and you kind of avoid one of the major sources of wind noise where um, you get a kind of vortex going behind the mirrors because of the unique mirror design on this car, where. Uh, the whole mirror is adjustable instead of having um, a gap for air to kind of circulate in uh, in the adjustable mirror. I really love the driver's gauge cluster here. Um, you've got Google Maps right in front of you, which is super helpful for navigation. Um, all, all the important information. And then also, as far as the um, driver assistance, automated cruise control with steering assist, it has that. Um, as far as I can tell, it works pretty well. Um, not... Uh, I wasn't really surprised by it. It's not, uh, you know, something completely new. It's similar to what competitors are offering in terms of driver assistance, um, but it's a it's a good system and kind of you expect it in this car at this price point. Sitting here at a stoplight, I notice the sound of the car more. So there definitely is like a fake sound that's being pumped out, but with this one, it's more about more about pedestrian safety at low speeds in terms of making sound than it is about uh, giving something for the driver to hear when you when you get on it. So uh, that's 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 the approach they've taken there. So apart from the interior quality on this model that doesn't have the uh, leather package, uh, I'm I'm pretty impressed with this car. Um, the driving experience is very smooth. Um, I like the feel. I personally like the sportier feel of the Olin suspension, and um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if you could easily achieve the EPA uh, range figures for the for the car. You know, sometimes you'll be able to get it, sometimes you won't. Um, I don't know. I have a feeling that that Polestar was a little more conservative than perhaps Tesla are in the EPA estimates. Um, this is a really well-rounded car. Despite the actual quality of materials, it is put together very solidly, no rattles, nothing like that. Um, and uh, overall, a fantastic infotainment system, great, great tech in this car, and a, a really worthy competitor of the Tesla Model 3. Um, certainly in terms of the driving experience and uh, tech, uh, which is which is what a lot of people find is most important. So this uh, this is a really, really good uh, kind of a first try from Polestar, even though it's the Polestar 2. This is their first fully electric vehicle, and I think they've really knocked it out of the park.